First off, this is not a meme build or a joke. This guy thought it was, and look at him now. Stripped down to the adventurer's tunic. First off, daggers do more damage than a falchion. It's weird, but that's the truth. So look at these totals and add just a little bit of physical damage and plus two weapon damage per knife. And your numbers start getting really crazy, really fast. And that's being conservative. Good gear is a whole nother story. You even have... <clears throat> you even have as much move speed as a rogue when sprinting. Nobody expects a plate fighter to close the distance this fast, especially since you don't need to run with your weapon out since daggers pull out instantly. This combined with the fact that some people don't even know what class you're playing. What the hell am I looking at? What the? Why do you have a dad? It's like giving people a confusion debuff and they're just clueless on how to fight you. Like this warlock who whiffed every spell and then just uh, fell over and, and died. And to think that this was one of the few times I was fine with being friendly. Anyway, I already know what some of you are thinking. What about doing Slayer Fighter with the daggers? It'll add another five damage each hit. Great idea. And you'd also think that the extra move speed is a benefit, but not really since the plate version's already at 106%. As a starting place for your move speed, you really don't need more than that. So for the extra 5 damage, you're giving up about half your damage reduction. With throwables, bows, and barbarians everywhere, that's just not a good trade-off. So no Slayer, but Slayer's still fun. And after testing out Slayer, I learned that my rotted brain was craving that fast-paced dexterity, which my original build didn't have much of. I swapped out the pants for cloth, boots to adventure, and got some dexterity on my other gear. So here's the build, and there's so many ways to play it, but the best part is the outplay potential it gives you. Your brain can finally be put to use after all that W key bar barbarian gameplay. Not by a lot, the combat system's not that deep, but you'll see. I know there's a barbarian around here, so I'm gonna try and take like no damage this fight, which is the beauty of this build. You're nimble, you can dodge this dude's smite. You can get him with his little, oh. I was gonna say you can get him with his book out. This is basically how every cleric fight goes. Oh. Oh, it just couldn't be more picture perfect. I mean, that's just every cleric right there. And there's the barbarian right on cue. Oh, I don't have arrows. Oh, I don't have sprint. I don't have sprint. Okay, maybe my plan's falling apart now. Oh, my sprint. Save me. Okay, I gotta think up a new plan now. Uh, I have no throwables. My bow's out of arrows. Uh, I just gotta... I gotta play the corners. Yeah, now nah, you heard me pull out my knives there. That's the only way I'm going to win, though, is if I get cheap hits like that. Especially if he keeps doing that. Oh, come on. Okay, I, yeah, I just got to fight him. The longer I wait, the more he's going to hit me with those. All right, come on. No way! I'm... I lived. What a beautiful showcase right there. The cleric pulling out his book a foot away from me because he doesn't expect the speed. And finally hitting the barbarian with the instant pull out of the daggers. Oh, and that's big money on that pendant. I'm getting out of here. No! Nope, I got a slayer chasing me. This isn't that good. I think I'm actually faster though. Oh, he's slow. Yep, that's a job for the stiletto right there. It's crazy, but both these daggers actually serve different purposes. The stiletto does more burst damage, and the rondelle does more damage the longer you stab for. So if you think you're going to kill someone in three hits, then use the stiletto any more than that and use the rondelle. And since you do have daggers, you could become this weird rogue final boss for all of you who are lose, uh, who, who play rogue. I made a video on rogue. But instead of being like a tiny fly rogue that gets squashed by every other class, you're a fighter with 130 HP and 50% damage reduction. So you basically can't lose when you have the jump on someone. I hope this guy doesn't do like half my HP with that smite staff. He's dead. There's just nothing he can do. And he killed someone too. Yeah, I think sitting in the darkness is definitely not a strategy I want more people doing. Okay, I'm sitting in the storm waiting for this guy. I think this peak degeneracy. Yeah, I think that's enough of this stupid play style. Yeah, let's get back to the good stuff, which is obviously barbarians throwing a bunch of axes at me. He's got an inventory full. If he really does, I mean, I could kind of use that to my advantage. 
Oh, that was a nice shot. Yeah, if, if this guy just keeps throwing, I can just catch him real close when he's uh, in the middle of throwing one of his stacks. And I'll be able to get like three hits in or two before he even pulls out his weapon. You know what? Sounds like a plan. Oh, maybe a little too close. Okay, just gotta bait him into a little axe throwing competition. I knew it. Oh, 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 I could have died there because of my whiffage. The plan worked out great, though. I mean, I mean, that's the thing. When people throw one axe, that usually means they're about to throw another one because people usually throw them in pairs. Okay, I'm not at the best spot. I do not want to be in a corner. I'm going to try and hit him with the dodge. Yep, dodging a war mall is still sick. Nope, this is not good. I'm in a big open room against a warlock. And my aim sucks. Yeah, I just have to get in melee range before he, before he gets out of this form. Okay, pulled those out way too early. I can't see anything. Yeah, I could have gotten so many more hits in if I actually pulled him out at the right time. Wait, he's running away? Wait, now now he can't hit me, but I can hit him. There we go. Finally some PvP on this barren wasteland. Next time I'll be experiencing that will probably be in about seven more ice cave runs. By the way, use whatever bow you want. I just like the survival bow because it's like a dagger in bow form. But recurve's good too. Long bow's a little slow, but you could probably make it work. You know, then you fighter perks out and it actually fits perfectly with this build. So I thought, why not replace the dagger for rapier and see if it's better than daggers? What I found out was that the build's not actually that bad. Like three hits on a slayer who looks homeless, but has some nice gear. That's not bad. However, that and the extra range you get are the only upsides. After the first three hits, the Rondell dagger does more damage, has less move speed penalty and pulls out way faster. So for plate, I'm sticking with the daggers. But if you're a slayer player, then definitely try it out. That brings me to something I haven't mentioned yet about this build, and it could very well be the most OP part. Remember how I talked about stacking the true physical damage because you hit people so many times? Get your friend on wizard to give you a ignite for an extra five magic damage. Oh, and, and ditch this dagger for a crystal ball. That's another six magic damage while keeping the two weapon damage. And how about some Templar armor if you're feeling it? That's 42 damage per swing. One less than a falchion, but over two times faster. You got that? Now just let the fire do its job. The whiffage is really apparent with the fire noises, huh? I don't really have a duo that plays the game a lot, so uh, that, that's all the clips I have. And tell me if you know of another stupid strategy that works pretty well. I just love using weird stuff. It's just so much fun and keeps the game fresh. And if you see a plate dagger fighter, that's probably me or someone that watched this video. I haven't seen a single person doing this.